Hi everyone and welcome back to another 3D Revolution. In this video I'm going to be taking you through how to download, install and set up Octoprint on a Raspberry Pi. Let's have a look. A few years ago I posted a video on how to do exactly this, how to set up Octoprint on a Raspberry Pi. But since then the process has changed quite a bit and luckily it's become a lot quicker and easier to do. So I thought I'd post a updated tutorial on how to get started. Now whilst Octoprint can be installed and set up on a variety of devices, it's most common to set up on a Raspberry Pi. Whilst there is a global shortage of these at the moment, it is still technically possible to get hold of them, albeit at boosted prices. And I'll pop the link in the description below to some of the places you can still get them. Now whilst this is the most popular device to install Octoprint on, this tutorial is going to focus on how to install it on a Raspberry Pi, but if there are any other devices you would like to see a tutorial on, please pop them in the comments below. Now to get started on downloading and installing Octoprint on a Raspberry Pi, you don't actually need the Raspberry Pi itself. All you need is a micro SD card, a card reader and a computer. So let's have a look at how to get started. Head to raspberrypi.com forward slash software, I'll pop a link in the description below, and download the Raspberry Pi Imager. I'll be doing the tutorial from a Windows machine, but this process is pretty much identical for Windows, Mac and Linux. But if you are using Raspberry Pi OS, or if you've got any issues regarding differences between systems, you can either check the descriptions on the Raspberry Pi website, or post them as a comment below and I'll get back to you as quick as I can with some help. With the Raspberry Pi Imager loaded, go down to Choose OS, Other Specific Purpose OS, 3D Printing, OctoPi, and finally OctoPi Stable, which is the most recently released stable version of OctoPi. Now, with the micro SD card connected to your computer via card reader, go to Choose Storage. If you have multiple options here, make sure you're selecting the right one, your micro SD card, because whatever you select here is going to get formatted. So that's my card there. Now before we select right, let's go down and click on the cog settings button. This opens up a quick and simple menu which allows us to change some settings, saving us some time later on. Let's start out by activating set hostname. This allows us to set a name for our OctoPi or our OctoPrint. If you're going to be uh, using just the one in your household, then potentially just call it OctoPrint. If you're going to be using multiple versions of this for multiple printers, maybe name each one after the printer that you're going to use to control it. Next one is enable SSH. We want to activate this as well, and this is going to allow you to log into your Raspberry Pi from a computer or another device so you can change certain settings. And you want to keep use password authentication turned on. You also want to make sure that set username and password is activated. And leaving username set as pi, by default, set yourself a nice and secure password. Next, configure wireless LAN. You want to turn this on because you want it to be able to connect to your Wi-Fi. So enter the name of your Wi-Fi network here. And then under password, the password for your Wi-Fi network. And finally, you can just click save. Now we've got that all set up, you can click write. And this is just double checking that you are aware that the card that you've selected is going to be formatted. We'll click yes. Now this is going to take a bit of time, so I will skip forwards when this is completed. Once this has, we can move forward, so I'll see you in a sec. Okay, and once that's complete, you can click continue and remove your micro SD card from the card reader. So now pop your micro SD card into your Raspberry Pi and plug it into a power source. Provided you entered the right Wi-Fi details on the previous section whilst we were in the imaging software, it should now automatically connect to your Wi-Fi network. As it's the first time we powered it on since installing it, it might take a minute to load up, so go make yourself a cup of tea and then pop back onto your computer. Open a browser window and in the address bar at the top, enter either the IP address of your Raspberry Pi, or if you set up a host name at the start of the imager software that we just used, you can enter that.local. So for me it was octoprint dot local then hit enter 
If nothing loads, your Raspberry Pi may still be getting set up. When you've plugged it in for the first time after installing Octoprint, it can take a while to get itself unpacked and ready to go. So go and make yourself a cup of tea, come back, try entering the IP address or host name again, and you should be brought here. So here we have the setup wizard. It's just a quick and easy way of getting Octoprint set up and ready to go. So I'll take you through these steps now. We can click next. This isn't a feature we'll need to use right now, but it's a useful feature to be aware of for the future. If you do a backup save from Octoprint, once everything's set up and save it to your computer, if you need to either restore that save in the future because your Raspberry Pi is broken or because you're getting another one set up, you can then restore it from that save and it will just save you time having to do all of your individual personalized settings in the future. It will do it all in one go, but we won't do that for now. We'll click next. Now whilst you set up a username and password earlier, that was for the Raspberry Pi itself and you'll use that for accessing it via SSH to do things like updating your operating system. This is your username and password for Octoprint itself and you want to make sure that you use something different here. Then just click create account and click next. Rather than your Raspberry Pi trying to really intensively send and receive data over the internet when it's not got a connection, you can activate the connectivity check which allows it to routinely, so it's standard set to 15 minutes, check if it has an active internet connection before it does any of these processes. You can also set the IP address that it checks against, um, but for, for all this stuff I would just say leave it as standard and click enable connectivity check. Then click next. Now I'm sure most of you are familiar with the anonymous usage tracking on various websites and software. Um, it's generally just tracking uh, what sort of functions you're using if you get errors come up and sending that back anonymously to Octoprint so they can be aware of what's causing issues and making the software better down the line. It's obviously going to be a personal choice. It won't have any impact on how the software is going to perform for you. Uh, it just aids Octoprint if you were to trust the information that they're taking um, in improving the software. Um, I absolutely trust them, they're a great group, so I'm just gonna click Enable, and then click Next. Unless you're developing your own plugin or you really know what you're doing, I'd advise you have the plugin blacklist turned on. This is effectively a way of preventing you from downloading or updating to plugins which have known issues with your version of Octoprint. So I'm gonna click Enable, once that's done, click next. Now we can set up your printer. Give your printer a name. I'm just going to call mine for now Prusa because it's a Mark III that I'm going to set up. And then you can go through to Print Bed and Build Volume tab. So obviously all the settings in this section are going to depend on what printer you're setting up. I'm setting up for a Prusa Mark III S, but if you're using any other printer, please make sure you're using the correct settings for your printer. You'll be able to find them online easily enough. So the first option here is form factor. You've got rectangular, which is the standard Cartesian design most 3D printers these days are. You've also got circular, so that would be a delta style printer, so we'll leave this with rectangular for now. Origin, you've got lower left or center. This is basically a what point on your print bed is the origin point for all of the dimensions with your toolpaths. Uh, you can then tick if you've got a hate bed, a heated chamber, etc. And then you also need to enter your print volume. So this is going to be the dimensions of the printable area of your printer. Okay, and then let's go up to axes. You want to enter the maximum speed that your printer is capable of running in each of the different axes, as well as making sure that the Z height is, uh, it will usually be a significantly slower rate and the extrusion rate that your printer is capable of. In addition to that, based on where the end point is on your printer, you might need to invert some of the axes. And finally, we have the hot end and extruder tab. So here you've got the nozzle diameter. Most printers that you buy these days will come as standard with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. So unless you've changed it, it is most likely going to be a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. Uh, the amount of extruders you've got, again, as standard, it's going to be one unless you've got a multi extruder printer, but you'll be aware of that. Uh, and then the default extrusion length, you can leave that to five millimeters. All of these settings can be changed at a later date, but this just helps you get set up and ready to go. Okay, so let's click next. So we can click finish and let the setup wizard get started. Okay, so your default settings have been set up. Let's go connect this to your printer. As your Pi will be running the whole time you're printing for hours and sometimes even days, it's good to make sure it stays cool. 
So for that I use a 5 volt fan and you can plug this directly into the 5 volt and ground pins on your Pi so this will automatically power up any time your Raspberry Pi is turned on. I then put the whole thing into a 3D printed enclosure and I can strap that or screw that straight onto my printer to keep it out of my way but within reach of easy cable management. Then all you have to do is connect your Raspberry Pi to your printer using the same port on your printer that you'd use to connect it to your computer and power them both on. Now head back to your computer and open a browser. On the left here you have your connection window. This is basically the settings used to connect your Raspberry Pi to your printer. Most of this can be left on also but we'll go through what each of them means. So the serial port is basically the physical port on your Raspberry Pi that is connected to your printer. If you have multiple devices connected to your Raspberry Pi that could be perceived as a printer by Octoprint, you can click on the menu here and select which one you want it to talk to. Under board rate, this is effectively the speed at which the data is transferred between the Octoprint and the printer. This will depend on what printer you're using, but having it set to auto works fine 99% of the time. And finally, the printer profile. This is the profile that you set up during the setup wizard. If you were to set up more printers, you would be able to choose between them here and tell Octoprint which of your printers it's going to talk to. Finally, you can save connection settings if you had set something different than the auto standard settings here and auto connect on startup. I'd suggest having this because it just means every time you turn on Octoprint with your printer it's going to automatically connect to that printer. Unless you're unplugging and plugging things in on a regular basis this is probably going to be a good option for you. And click connect. So now it's connected to your printer, you'll notice that it is hidden the connection window. You can click on here to open up again, but unless you want to actively disconnect your printer, there's no need for this window so you can hide that again. So the state window is something we'll look at a bit later on when we're actively printing. And below that we have files. Now this is going to show two different things. Firstly, it'll show you any of your G-code files that you've uploaded to Octoprint, to your Octoprint server. Uh, and you can upload them from here which we'll look at in a bit but you can see that even though we've only just installed this it's already showing a g-code file here that's because this is showing the g-code files on the SD card in my printer itself so anything you've got on the SD card in your printer itself will also show up here and you can access it via the Octoprint server so we'll come to this in a bit before we move on, let's go up and click the Spanner Settings button on the top here. There's a lot of options in the Settings tab here, but we won't go through a lot of these tabs for now, as for many of you, they won't be essential. But I will be releasing videos looking into each of these in time. For now, click down to Printer Profiles. This is the printer that we set up in the setup wizard, but if you had your Octoprint connected to multiple printers or you were going to switch it between printers, you can click add profile here and add more printers. I won't take you through this now, but it's the exact same process as we did in the setup wizard. That is how you add them and then you can then jump between them in the connection window on the homepage here. You can choose your printer profile here. So next let's go down to G-Code Scripts. You'll likely have already found that in your slicing software you can enter certain commands to be actioned before and after your print. It's worth noting that you can also set commands like that here which will run before and after anything that's been set in your slicer. So not only can you set things up that are going to run every time with every print but you can add additional stuff that's going to run if you're running via Octoprint rather than straight from your printer itself. Now let's jump onto the webcam and time-lapse tab. Cameras on Octoprint are useful for a variety of things. They can help you monitor your print whilst you're out of the room, you can run and record time-lapse videos of your prints, and you can use plugins such as Obico, previously called Spaghetti Detective, which uses AI to monitor your print, and if it detects a problem, it will pause the print and send you a photo to your phone to check if you're ready to continue or you want to cancel the print. Anyway, you've got a couple of options when it comes to using a camera. You can use a Raspberry Pi camera and connect it via the ribbon cable connector on the board, or you can use a standard USB webcam. Here you can enable the webcam support, where you can set a few different settings to adjust the camera and video settings. 
It's also possible to have multiple webcams plugged in and running simultaneously, but I'll cover that in a different and more specific video. I'll also just quickly point out that in the plugin manager, down here, uh, here is where you can add, deactivate and delete plugins you've installed which add functionality to Octoprint. I've posted a video previously going through some of the best plugins for Octoprint, but I will be doing an updated version soon. It's worth noting that by flicking this switch here, you can disable a plugin without uninstalling it. So if you're troubleshooting, you can find out if the problem is related to one of your plugins without having to completely uninstall and then reinstall it. As I mentioned, there's a lot of features in here, but that's all we need to go through for now whilst we're getting you up and running. So let's hit save. Okay, so before we upload and start printing a file, let's have a quick look at the user interface here. So I've already been through the connection window and we're gonna look at the state and files windows in a minute. Uh, so let's keep an eye on the right hand side here. So the first tab here is temperature. This is quite self-explanatory. This is a chart that shows you the temperature of the various components of your printer. So the red is relative to your tool or your hot end of your extruder. And then the blue is relative to your print bed, if you've got a heated print bed that is. So um, you've got time along the bottom and temperature along the top, so you can see how that changes. The bold color is the temperature it actually is at, and the faded, more pastel version of those colors is the target. So if you've just turned it on and it's heating up to 200 degrees, it will show this color here as 200 degrees, and then this color is going to slowly build up to that point as it heats up. On the bottom here, you've got your actual temperature for each component, so the temperature that it currently is at. Then here, you've got your target temperatures, which are going to be relative to, if it is receiving G-code, it will show the correct target that the G-code is requested for each here, but you can actively change these on the fly if you need to. So on that topic, you've got the offset, Let's say you've created a G-code for a file and it's all ready to go, but you've decided to print it in a different filament that requires, let's say, 10 degree hotter to print it properly. Instead of having to re-slice it and recreate that G-code, you could just come into your offset and then create 10 degrees, click save, and now that means that any G-code command it receives will be 10 degrees hotter than what has been requested. So this is a relative change to all commands for that tool. I'm not gonna use that for now, so I'll get rid of that, but that's a really useful tool if you need to make on the fly changes. The next window is control. So here you've got a few things. This top bit here is obviously the webcam view. If you don't have a webcam plugged in, this will just be a black window, but uh, you can also, if you've got multiple webcams, you can change between which one you're viewing here. Underneath, you have controls to actually move the printer itself. So this button here and this button here are your homing buttons. So this homes your X and Y axis and this homes your Z axis. The arrows are allowing you to move those axes in the direction you click. And the number here is how far you move it per click. So 10 is 10 millimeters, 100 is 100 millimeters, and so on. So if we've got 10 millimeters selected at the moment, let's select 100. If we get the print bed to go back 100 millimeters, there we go. And then you could have the nozzle go up 10 millimeters, and then to the right 20. There we go. Um, next you've got the tool, so this is if you wanted to extrude or uh, retract the filament within there by a certain amount, you'd set how much filament you want to retract or extrude, click that button and then the motor is going to extrude or retract that filament. Then you've got general, so you can turn off your motors if it's been sitting there a long time, it just uh, helps reduce the strain on the motors. And then you've got your fan on or off, so you can turn off or on all your fans if you need to. Finally, you've got your feed rate modifier and your flow rate modifier, and these are much like the offsets on the temperature. These allow you to modify the rate of feed and flow if you need to change those settings. So next, let's go to the G-Code Viewer. So here, you're going to get a 2D drawing 
representing of the uh, layer that it is currently doing if you're in the middle of a print. Here you can change a few different settings that will affect how that looks. The next tab is Terminal. Here is going to be a live feed of all of the information being transferred between your printer and the Raspberry Pi and you can send manually written commands to your printer or Octoprint. And then finally we have time lapse. So here is how you can run a time lapse with your webcam of your print. Uh, I'm going to do a few full tutorial dedicated to time lapses with Octoprint, but a quick overview for now. Your time lapse mode, obviously, you would want this on in one of these two modes. So timed is just taking a photo every, let's say, five seconds or ten seconds. On Z change takes a photo every time it moves up a layer. So this potentially could be a smoother time lapse because if your layers are vastly different sizes, then this will mean that the speed at which your print progresses will be drastically different. So I would usually go for on Z change. That will change the settings you've got here. Again, I'm going to do a full tutorial on how to do time lapses, both using the built in time lapse mode as well as using some really good Octoprint time lapse plugins. So for now, I'll click that off and we can go back to temperature. So to get something printed, the first thing you're going to want to do is to upload G code. So as I mentioned before, there's technically already G code accessible here. This is something that's sitting on the SD card inside the printer itself. But I want to show you how to upload files to Octoprint. So if you come down here, click upload, and then I'll upload this, which is part of my portal pumpkin design that I had a video of recently. So that's uploading this to Octoprint onto the Octoprint server. If I was to go upload to SD card, that uploads it to the SD card within my printer and means that I can run that through my printer. So if my printer has certain features that aren't going to be accessible by Octoprint, that's a way that I can action that. Okay, so once that's uploaded, you've got a few different options here. Uh, I'll go through them quickly. So you've got download, so you can download your G code back to your computer from your Octoprint server. You can move this, so if you were to create a folder, say my designs you could then move this into the my designs folder so this is a good way of organizing it if you've got lots of g-code on your octopi uh, you've next got delete so this will just delete the g-code from the server you've got load we'll look at that in a second and you've got print so load and print does two things at once we'll just go load and what that does is it brings it up into our state window. So you've got the file name, uh, the date and time that it was uploaded to Octoprint, who it was uploaded by, obviously we're logged in as ourselves at the moment, and then a couple of other details that aren't yet visible. So the last stage is to click print. If you were to click load and print down here, it would do this all in one go and it would start printing. So if we click print now, and if we were to go into G-Code Viewer, yes, please visualize regardless of size because it's a large file, it's just warning me. If I move up through it, here I can now see each layer that it is going to draw as it prints. So we'll come back to temperature. You can see now the target and the actual. So the target for the, uh, the actual for the tool is 136 degrees, which is here. And then the target is up at 215 degrees. So as I move this along, you see this red line that's moving with me. The number here and here is relative to where that line is intersecting with these lines here. Okay, so all we can do now is we can obviously pause the print or we can completely cancel the print once this is finished running the g-code that it was currently doing. That is something that's worth bearing in mind is that to pause or cancel a print, it's not going to be immediate. It's going to finish doing its current job, the current commands that it has sent, and then it will cancel your print. Okay, and so that is how to set up and start using Octoprint. And that's it. That's how you get Octoprint downloaded, installed, set up, and printing on a Raspberry Pi. 
I really recommend that you check out my video on recommended plugins for Octoprint as it can really improve the user experience with this setup and also keep an eye out for my future videos like the updated plugins video as well as things like the time lapses in Octoprint video which will be coming out very soon. I popped a link in the description below to things like the Raspberry Pi, fans, webcams and other things that might be useful for this setup. If you've got any questions, pop them in the comments below. Otherwise, don't let, forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks very much.